Hello everyone, it's Kevin. Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to 3D print the lid from Yasashi Kyojin on my mini factory. This one is pretty cool. There is a lot of stuff floating around, so I'm going to see how it goes in two box. And then we're going to try to have fun painting. I don't have a really good idea already, but I'm going to try to mess around with color. Just try to have fun. I've done a lot of tall figure recently, so doing a mini is going to be a bit more fun. Let's go. Okay, let's start to angle the model. I'll rescale a little bit, scale down. Here on the base is pretty simple, I'm just adding a couple of support. And for the leech, everything is all over the place. So what I decide is to just put a bunch of support and make sure everything is like gonna be alright. I'm not trying to be clean, I'm not trying to be efficient. I know no matter the angle that I'm going to choose, all the robe here floating is going to be a bit of a pain, so I went with some medium to make sure some of the main floating pieces are going to be supported and then I'm just adding a tiny bit of uh, light support for one, the island and two, some of the place where you need to spread a bit because when everything is a bit wavy and uh, flat at some places, you just want to spread your support a little bit here I'm adding some details. I'm still cleaning here because on tiny parts it's okay to just be a bit more clean. And later on I'm just checking again. So here I'm going layer by layer. I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything obvious. Like a huge piece that I didn't support well enough for example. And I'm checking for some major island as well. And when I was sure everything was fine, I went back and just cleaned a tiny bit. Okay, I had my pieces printed and primed already. I was expecting a bit more damage. I went a bit crazy into G2 box. I didn't have the patience to make everything perfect. I just smashed a bunch of support and everything came out pretty well. I had a little bit of cleanup to do under some parts, but that's pretty nice, so nothing failed, everything is pretty clean. I've primed, I zen it all highlighted on top and it's pretty good for now. I have the tiny base as well that I'm gonna use after just to make the, the guy stand on it. I think I went with 75 or 80% uh, from the original scale. If you go smaller, be aware, this one is gonna be super thin, so I don't really recommend going super tiny with this one. And that's a cool model, so let's go painting, let's try to have some fun and mess around with the color. Okay, so what I decided is to use some purple for the darker part of the model and turquoise going to green for the lighter part. So here I'm wet blending, really really heavy. I have a lot of water and a little bit of uh, glazing medium. I find it helpful to use the glazing medium to kind of wet blend. So. I'm going heavy, I don't mind having the paint kind of mix around and swirl inside. I'm still making sure later on I'm not having huge pooling of water in some places, so I'm cleaning uh, like a wash kind of. And when it's dry, I'm going back with a bit greener of a turquoise, so I'm adding a bit of green step by step. And here I'm focusing, I'm still wet blending, but uh, I'm focusing more on the, the top part, the highlight of the, the robe. I'm doing it with two brushes, one with the paint and one with water. It's the first time I've tried this technique and it's pretty cool, it's working fine on huge surface. Here I'm refining the highlight again with brighter green, going more on the edge. And I've probably started to use the Vallejo Fluo Green already. so. Every time I'm mixing a little bit more of it, here I've mixed it with white. Uh, the, the, the cover is really, really poor with the, this fluorescent color. So mixing it with other color is really helpful. And when you have some white highlights here, they are not pure white, they're still mixed. But you just go with some mixed white and fluo and then you use the fluo over the white like you would do with some poor paint cover and the, the color is going to pop out after. I still went with a lot of coat 
over the whites as you can see here everything is really bright really like popping on the eyes but that's cool that's the effect i wanted so here i'm applying some of the the other base coat for the flesh so the the monster the flesh it's kind of a mix of bone and flesh at some point and i decided to keep the the flesh kind of tone i still added some of the purple on the dark places and not really much the green but more like the purple so after applying some base coat some highlight i choose to use the wash to get the base for my shadows it's a bit tricky to reach inside the robe for the the skin as well so the wash is really helpful and here when it's dry i'm applying some kind of dark red purplish and I'm going in my recess and my shadow. And I keep the same, the same like uh, dead flesh tone, I think. And I'm doing my highlight with it. So I'm trying to clean the wash and I'm trying to bring more contrast as well. The top of the face here, yeah, the skull was a bit hard, but I focus on the cheek and the eyebrow, kind of. Going back on some of the leather strap around the model. Here I apply some wash on the book and some of the bonish part that I had around, just to weather the bit some of those parts. So it's like a light wash. And here the, the around part of the, what is it? It's not a scarf, it's like a top stuff. I'm just doing gold for the rims. Same around the books. And the small buckle at the front, I use gold as well. I decided to do the same color on the books. Uh, I used purple, I glazed one side purple and one side kind of green. The effect is cool, I could have chosen another color, I was not sure what to do here. Same on the gold, I'm trying to apply some of the, the color that I had, the purple and the green. Just to mix a bit. Yeah, I'm having fun on the book. I'm not trying to write anything special, I'm just randomly adding like a, a major capital later at the start and just some scramble around. For the second page, I decide to do some kind of pattern with some mixing going on, some blood after, and I use the green as well. It's quite fun to work on those tiny books. Here the end effect is pretty cool. On the eyes, uh, here I'm dry brushing some oranges. Um, I have just a tiny bit on my brush and I just want to try to give a tiny glow around the eyes. The base coat is just some white. So here the, the effect is really subtle. When I was done, I just went back with the orange and painted the eyes. I've tried to do like a line going down and bring some highlights and reflection with the white here. Really basic eyes. I didn't spend too much time on it. And here right at the end, what I'm doing, I'm using a CPR ink and I'm trying to refine the contour of the, the top part here. I just want to give like more contrast. And later on, I'm glazing the, the ink down as well, just to add some more volume. And I'm done painting the leech. This one was a lot of fun. I didn't paint a mini for a while, so it was good to go back to paint a mini and try to blend the color, just have some fun on it. I had the good idea for the robe, the purple and the green and the bright highlights. So the end result is pretty nice. I'm happy with it. I wanted to add more color to the rest of the model, but some, I was a bit lost. Sometimes I was not sure what to do. So I added a bit of the same tone to every part of the model, but nothing crazy. I need to work on this a little bit probably to even go crazier next time. I think 
the best part of painting a mini is just to have some fun with the color so that's what i really enjoy doing so i'm gonna try to do it more in the future if you enjoyed the video and the project subscribe i'm doing some 3d printing stuff every week and yeah see you next time bye